Uh, good morning, uh, dear students. So welcome to our session of microwave and uh, antennas. So in the previous session, we discussed regarding directivity and gain, and we solved a problem pertaining to uh, directivity and uh, gain uh, related uh, aspect. So in the previous session, we uh, discussed regarding directivity in which uh, we identified uh, what is exact directivity using the exact equation for uh, omega a, that is beam area or beam solid angle and uh, approx directivity using the approximate equation for identifying the beam area or the beam solid angle. Uh, so we identified that and uh, then we obtained the db, db difference. Then apart from this, uh, if a particular pattern is given, if a particular pattern is specified. So for example, in previous session, we uh, discussed regarding uh, uh, one uh, specification that is say for example, uh, they specify that it's a unidirectional unidirect cosine pattern. So if only uh, this thing is specified, then how do you obtain the directivity? So we had uh, solved in even problems pertaining to uh, those aspects. That is uh, one related to uh, sine parameter and one related to cosine uh, parameter. And uh, in that we discussed regarding unidirectional and bidirectional patterns. Uh, so that discussion we had in the previous session. Uh, so moving uh, ahead, so next point uh, what uh, we'll be uh, discussing is uh, we'll be discussing concepts pertaining to antenna apertures. So what is basically antenna aperture? Antenna aperture uh, can be uh, defined as the area through which the power is radiated or received. So whenever we have a particular antenna, it can either act as a transmitter or it can act as a receiver. So under this, uh, whatever power is being transmitted by the transmitting antenna or whatever power is being received by the receiving antenna will define the aperture of that antenna. Then uh, uh, if I have to consider the alternate definition of this, so then we have the alternate definition wherein Antenna aperture is defined as the ratio of the power which is under consideration to the overall power density. So now why uh, we specify the power under consideration over here. So if we uh, observe uh, what we have is we have either the antenna acting as a transmitting antenna or acting as a receiving antenna. Now, when we consider uh, antenna aspects, right, the power which is present, uh, it can be divided into different aspects. Now, one, the power that is being transmitted, one, the power that is being uh, received, then within this, again, uh, we have power which is uh, lost due to heat, then uh, we have the effective power which is delivered to the load. So these are different aspects which we can look forward. So when we consider this, right, uh, we can have a WS, which we can define as the power which is scattered or radiated. That is when we consider this antenna, uh, this antenna will be radiating the power. So it will be either this or some amount of power will be scattered. So it will be either the radiated or the scattered power. So this antenna will be transmitting the power so that I can classify as radiated or scattered power. Then apart from that, uh, we can have the power which is lost basically due to the heat dissipation. So this is uh, say at the load end when I consider. So here uh, what happens is certain amount of power might be lost. So that will be classified as WL that loss is basically due to the heating aspect. So then uh, we can have another parameter of uh, power which we call as effective power. So this is actually the power which is being delivered to the load which is identified either as PE or WE. So these are the different powers which you can consider. So therefore aperture is defined as the ratio of the power which is under consideration. The power can be either scattering power or total power or uh, it might be the effective power to the overall power density. So based on this, uh, we have different apertures which are specified. So we can have uh, effective aperture, uh, we can have uh, scattering aperture, we can have loss aperture, but then uh, we can define what is 
called as collective aperture and lastly we have the physical aperture so we'll look into all these aspects one by one so my main reference would be from this part this setup so this is your physical uh, or physical physically how the antenna is appearing as a transmitter and a receiver so this is uh, say this is transmitting the uh, uh, this is either receiving or transmitting the power so with that power is again divided into ws wl and we what we specified over here that is scattered or radiated power power which is lost and the effective power respectively so then along with this uh, its circuit representation is shown over here that is this entire setup which is there we can represent it in circuit form and over here that is uh, in short this is how it can be so in overall if i split z a and uh, z t i can represent it in this form so here z a is related to the antenna impedance and z t is related to the load parameter to the load impedance so this antenna i can represent in circuit form over here so if i still simplify this is how it can be represented so here we can have a voltage source then the antenna parameter antenna impedance and then we have the load impedance so here uh, what uh, we are considering is we are considering the uh, instantaneous voltage and current so if i still simplify this what this antenna uh, impedance will consist of it can consist of uh, the uh, 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 the resistance which is due to the loss resistance which is due to the radiation and uh, it can have the impedance parameter uh, it can have the uh, either uh, it can be capacitance or it can be inductance so the reactive part is given over here resistive part we can contain these two parameters similarly at the load end we can have the resistive parameter of the load and the impedance or uh, the uh, reactive parameter of the load so this is how it is represented so with respect to these resistances and uh, the reactive components we can have some specifications given over there so if we uh, apply say kvl to this circuit analysis so when we apply kvl what we have is the induced current now why we specify induced current is as we had uh, seen in one of the sessions right how actually antenna is receiving the power and uh, identifying what has been transmitted what is the power that has been transmitted so those all things we are able to estimate so that is a uh, field uh, that is magnetic field will induce current in the receiving end of the antenna and that uh, that will uh, give us the information pertaining to the power which is being received so in one of the sessions we had uh, seen that induced uh, magnetic field will generate the current in the closed circuit so that is what we had observed so if that is the case then what is the induced current in this circuit what is the induced current so this is given by v divided by the overall impedance that is v by z what we specify that is the overall impedance so when we consider this circuit right what we have i is equal to v divided by the total impedance of the circuit which is the sum of these two za plus zt so now when i uh, consider the resistance parameters what i have rr plus rl plus rt and uh, admittance will be xa plus xt so when i simplify this still further it will be v divided by rr plus rl plus rt plus j into xa plus xt so this is your reactive component and this is the resistive component uh, which uh, you can utilize to identify what is the induced current and now when i take the magnitude of this so this is the overall magnitude what i'll be getting uh, so remember uh, that uh, a plus jb its magnitude is given by square root of a square plus b square so that is what they have applied over here so this is the overall value magnitude of the induced current v divided by square root of this re uh, resistive component square plus reactive component its square so now based on this uh, i can have a few definitions pertaining to the apertures the first one is the effective aperture 
now by definition uh, what we had we had specified that aperture is given as the ratio of the power which is under consideration to the overall power density so now uh, in short if i represent the overall power density as p if i represent it as p then uh, let us see what is meant by effective aperture so effective aperture the name itself tells so in this case i have to consider the effective power the power which is under consideration will be related to effective power so this will be the ratio of effective power to the overall power density it, it is the ratio of effective power to the overall power density so now what is effective power effective power is basically the power which is being delivered to the load so when that comes we have the resistive parameter of the load which comes into play so therefore what happens is this we i can replace it with i square rt where rt re refers to the load resistance it refers to the load resistance divided by p now uh, what is i value i value is given over here when i substitute this parameter in equation 3 i'll get effective aperture which is given by this equation so which is uh, v square rt divided by p value into this parameter rr plus rl plus rt its square plus xa plus xt its whole square so now uh, here uh, this is effective aperture so in which we are considering the ratio of effective power to the power density now there is uh, what is the maximum value pertaining to this effective aperture so this maximum value pertaining to this effective aperture will be obtained under these conditions if i have to uh, obtain the maximum value of this then what we consider is the loss has to be zero that is indirectly we are specifying that all the power which is there has to be delivered to the load that is there should be no loss all the power which is being radiated should be absorbed and given to the load so therefore loss has to be zero uh, then uh, any other losses are there which is basically given by the uh, these parameters it is basically given by these parameters that is reactive components this has to nullify so if that is the case then what i have uh, if rl is equal to zero and both the reactive components are opposite to each other so when we substitute over here what we have rl is zero and these two are opposite to each other so this equates to zero so then when we have this we have v square into rt divided by p into rr plus rt uh, now if maximum power has to be delivered to the load right then there should be impedance matching so that is what this equation is specifying that is uh, rr should be equal to the load impedance or, or we specify that load uh, resistance should be equivalent to the radiation resistance which is presented by the antenna so this again will come across what is actually rr radiation resistance so there is a derivation pertaining to this also so radiation this actually helps us to identify that uh, how the receiving antenna is observing the transmitting antenna so in one of the uh, sessions we had discussed even regarding concepts related to radiation resistance so this is uh, what we are having uh, for maximum effective aperture so for for this value to be maximum loss should be zero and the impedances of the antenna and the load should be opposite to each other then the uh, resistances should be matching so if then if these cases are adopted or if these cases are obtained then i'll obtain a maximum value of effective aperture so indirectly i'll be able to deliver more power to the load that is more effective power can be delivered to the load that is what we are checking out so when we substitute this in uh, this equation when we substitute and uh, simplify this we get maximum effective aperture which is given by v square divided by 4p into rr so this is 4p into radiation resistance radiation resistance so this is maximum effective aperture 
Uh, so in uh, coming forth sessions, right, we'll be identifying what is the maximum effective aperture for lambda by two antenna and short dipole. So there we'll be utilizing these equations. So let us move ahead. So what is effectiveness ratio, which is defined as alpha? So it is nothing but the if uh, ratio of effective aperture to its maximum value ratio of effective aperture to its maximum value. So this gives you the effective ratio. It is indirectly giving me the information pertaining to the ability of the antenna to feed power to the load. How much power will be delivered to the load? So that I can identify using the effectiveness ratio. So here again, effective aperture is relating to the effective power which is being delivered to the load. So based on that, again, we have the effectiveness ratio. So next one is the scattering aperture. So the name itself tells that this has to refer to the power which has been scattered or radiated. So it is defined as that is scattering aperture is defined as the ratio of scattered, scattered power <laughs> to the power density. Now, what is the scattered power given by? Scattered power is basically given by the radiation resistance of the antenna. It is identified by the radiation resistance of the antenna, which is under consideration. So here uh, at the starting, we had one discussion. So in this part, we had discussed uh, what is actually radiation resistance. It is actually a virtual resistance, uh, which gives us the information that how the other antenna is observing at this antenna. So how it is being observed. So that information is given by the radiation resistance. So that is what we are specifying over here, RR. So here uh, uh, we come across the scattered power or the radiated power. So in this case, uh, if I have to identify the scattered power, it is given by I square into the radiation resistance. This divided by the power density. Now again, when I substitute I value from this one, this is the equation what I'll be getting. So this is the parameter what I'll be getting. So this is the scattering aperture now here again i have a scattering ratio which is uh, which is given as the ratio of the scattering aperture to the effective aperture so when i uh, just consider so what is effective aperture it is given by r i square rt divided by p and what is scattering aperture it is given by i square rr divided by p so when i take as by ae what uh, parameters get cancelled i square and p get cancelled and we are left with ar uh, sorry rr divided by rt so which is basically the ratio of radiation resistance to the load resistance so this gives you the scattering ratio information so under ideal condition this should be one under ideal condition this should be one so if that is the case, then uh, what happens is uh, you will be uh, uh, delivering maximum power to the load. So that is R, RT should be equal to the radiation resistance. Then impedance matching happens. If that is the case, then maximum power will be delivered. So that is uh, what we are specifying over here. If this value is one, then it is the ideal situation what we have. And generally its range can be in from zero to infinity. Now next we have the loss aperture which is identified by AL. The name itself tells that we have to consider the power which is related to loss. So in this one we have WL divided by P. So uh, loss aperture is defined as the ratio of the uh, power which is lost due to heat dissipation to the power density. Mm -hmm. So uh, this one, uh, uh, when we substitute, we have I square RL divided by P. So when we uh, replace I with the previous equation, this is the equation what we obtain for loss aperture in terms of the impedance parameters of the antenna and the load. 
so last we have the collective aperture uh, the collective aperture is nothing but the ratio of all the powers what we have considered to the uh, to the uh, power density all the powers what we have considered it is the sum of all these powers to the overall power density so in short we define it as the total power which is the ratio of the total power which has been uh, trans, uh, received to the overall power density so here uh, we identify that parameter with w where w gives you the overall received power overall received power so what is the overall received power uh, which consists of it will be consisting of the power which has been radiated which is identified with the help of the radiation resistance the power which has been lost and the power which has been delivered to the load so all these powers when i sum i'll be getting the overall power which has been received by the antenna so that is if i just observe here so whatever power we are observing it will be related to the power which has been uh, received by this antenna plus the power which has been lost plus the power which has been delivered to the load so this power is given by the radiation resistance i square into rr this power is uh, loss is given with respect to the uh, loss resistance rl and this one is given with the uh, help of the load resistance that is rt so therefore what we have we have the collective uh, aperture which is given by i square uh, is common to all i square into rr plus i square into rl plus i square into rt so that divided by p so again when i substitute i this is the collective power what i'll be getting so collective power refers to all the powers what you have considered that is ws wl we all these powers added together divided by the power density gives you the collective aperture and now lastly we have the physical aperture which is identified by ap so in this one uh, this relates to the physical dimension of the antenna which is under consideration here we can have two kinds of antennas one is aperture kind of antennas for example uh, the dish antennas what we observe those are the aperture kind of antennas and uh, some of the antennas can be wire like structures just a wire like structure so those form the linear antenna so we can have uh, two kinds of uh, apertures defined for this that is one for the aperture kind of antennas and the other for linear antennas so when we consider this uh, say aperture kind of antennas the physical aperture for aperture kind of antennas will be defined as the mouth area of these antennas so if we observe say dish antenna from the front what happens is we'll just observe say a circle we'll observe a circle in this case so when we consider that circle now what is the area which is presented towards you so that gives you the physical aperture so if i happen to measure the area of this it will be given by say pi r square it will be given by pi r square since d is the diameter what we are considering so when we simplify this i'll get physical aperture of these kind of antennas which we call as aperture kind of antennas as the mouth area physical aperture of aperture kind of antennas is given by the mouth area of the antennas so which is given by pi d square by 4 and for linear antennas like uh, these wire kind of structures so this will be given by the area which is presented by this wire so when i hold the wire in front of uh, me what i can observe is i can observe the length and the diameter of the wire so when i estimate the area that is it is nothing but length into distance this gives me the physical aperture of linear antennas this gives me the physical aperture of the linear antennas so basically if you just observe uh, for uh, for aperture kind of antennas it is relevant to the area and for uh, linear antennas it is relevant to the length it is relevant to the length that is a physical aperture so this aperture itself we can classify in these all aspects 
So this is uh, we have with respect to app purchase. Uh, so next uh, we have uh, one concept that is absorption ratio or aperture efficiency. So now uh, here we uh, saw that uh, what is the physical aperture uh, which is presented to the antenna which is transmitting. So here if we observe, uh, say if this is the antenna, so if I observe it from the other end, what happens is I'll be seeing say a square or a rectangle. So it will be giving me the area that is the mouth area of this will be the physical aperture. So this aperture is available for reception of the power. But what happens is this overall power actually gets scattered uh, then something some uh, power might be lost in the terms of heats and only a certain amount of power will be delivered to the load. So therefore what happens is not the entire power which has been radiated which has been received will be delivered to the load. So this uh, tells that the overall efficiency of this system will be less than 100%. So how do I obtain that uh, efficiency? I obtain it based on how much power you have delivered to the load to the overall power which is which it can receive. So this mm -hmm. antenna can receive certain amount of power and how much power this, uh, this has been delivered to the load that is effective power. So therefore, uh, we have the absorption ratio or the antenna efficiency, which is given as the ratio of maximum effective aperture to the physical aperture. So physical aperture is telling you that this can receive the power over this aperture, but effective you are delivering only some amount. So what is the maximum value pertaining to that? It is given by effective maximum effective aperture. So therefore, ratio of maximum effective aperture to the physical aperture of the antenna gives the antenna efficiency or absorption ratio. So this is with respect to the antenna efficiency. <coughs> now there is another parameter what we have to consider. The derivation is not there for you, but we require the equation which is uh, obtained from this derivation. Uh, that is uh, uh, when we uh, consider, when we consider this diagram, that is uh, radiation over the beam area omega A. So if we consider at a distance uh, R, if the received uh, field is e, ER and at the transmitting antenna, if the field is EA, and uh, if you're considering a beam area of omega a that is a beam solid angle of omega a and if a is the effective aperture of the antenna which is under consideration then what is the relation of omega a with the operating wavelength and uh, with the operating wavelength and the effective aperture so that is what this derivation specifies so here uh, what we have is, uh, so the power radiated will be given in these parameters that is EA squared divided by Z naught into AE, where Z naught is the intrinsic impedance of the medium what you are considering. And if it is free space, right, then Z naught value will be 120 pi or 377 ohms. So similarly, if uh, we consider the field at a distance r uh, then uh, the power which is being radiated which is observed at that point so that is if i observe the power at uh, this point then it will be relevant to er which is uh, considers all these parameters we have to consider all these parameters so when we consider this right uh, what we have is it is er square divided by z naught and at a distance of r it relates to with respect to the omega a so this is the this is the uh, this is what uh, the radiated power is observed at a distance r so p is equal to ar square divided by z naught into r square into omega a and ideally these two equations should be equal should be equal that is the power radiated should be equal so when we equate these two equations right when we equate these two equations and simplify it when we equate and simplify it, 
what we have is we obtain this equation which gives the relation between effective aperture and the beam area when we equate these two parameters that is power uh, which has been radiated from the antenna at uh, its point and when the power which has been radiated and observed at the point at a distance r so these two have to be equal so when you equate and you simplify it when you simplify it uh, we have another parameter that is er is related to the field at a with this equation so radiated field uh, the field at uh, point R is equal to Ea into effective aperture divided by lambda into R. When you simplify this overall equation, what you have is you obtain lambda square, which is equal to Ae into omega A. You obtain Ae into omega A. So therefore, uh, this gives you the relation between effective aperture and the beam area or the beam solid angle of the antenna. And they are rela related by the operating wavelength square of the operating wavelength so therefore uh, we had one equation for directivity where directivity was given by d is equal to 4 pi by omega a now how i can obtain the relation of directivity in terms of effective aperture in terms of effective aperture so in order to do that you have to use this uh, relation uh, which we term as aperture beam area relation so aperture beam area relation so what does this uh, give us it gives the product of uh, aper uh, effective aperture and beam area is equal to the uh, square of lambda that is the square of the wavelength operating wavelength now when we substitute for omega a we have omega a given by lambda square divided by ae when you substitute this equation over here we obtain directivity which is given by 4 pi into effective aperture divided by lambda square. So therefore you can observe that directivity is related to omega A. It is also related to effective aperture. It is also related to the operating wavelength. It is also related to the operating wavelength. <coughs> so this is a relation of directivity with effective aperture. This equation gives the relation between these two. So where d is equal to 4 pi by omega a and when you substitute omega, you have 4 pi into a divided by lambda square. So this is what we have for, for uh, the relation between directivity and effective aperture. And uh, we had uh, seen that for isotropic antenna, directivity value is 1. So when you substitute directivity value equal to 1 and simplify it, what we obtain is effective aperture for isotropic antenna under consideration will be given by lambda square by 4 pi. It will be given by lambda square by 4, 4 pi. So this, is, this will be the effective aperture under ideal conditions. So that is for ideal antenna, that is the isotropic antenna. So isotropic antenna is a lossless antenna. So this will be the effective aperture for the lossless antenna what we are considering. So which is nothing but the isotropic antenna what we specify. Uh, so all uh, the uh, lossless antennas must have uh, a either equal to or greater than this value. So whatever value is present over here, it should be either greater than this or it, it should be equal or it should be greater than under ideal conditions since we don't have uh, under uh, the general conditions since we don't have uh, antennas which radiate equally in all directions so what happens is the effective aperture will be greater than these values so we can observe uh, this in the coming fourth sessions wherein we'll be uh, identifying uh, the maximum effective aperture for few of the antennas so this is uh, with respect to apertures, that is antenna apertures. Then along with that, we uh, saw what is the aperture beam area relation and then we observe how directivity is related to effective aperture. So moving ahead. So I'll come to uh, this part. Uh, first I'll uh, uh, 
Uh, so in this case, uh, what uh, we have to do is we have to obtain the maximum effective aperture of a short dipole. Now, when do we call a dipole as a short dipole? So dipole is uh, the element uh, what we had uh, seen in uh, the uh, discussions in the previous session. So we had uh, discussed uh, how antenna radiation happens. Uh, so we, in which we had uh, considered a bent uh, conductor, uh, which is of this type. So there are, there are two conductors. And when we connect uh, these two conductors with the source, we had seen that how electric and magnetic fields are being associated with them. That is because of the flow of the electrons, how they get associated that we had seen. So that kind of structure we call as a dipole. So in this dipole, this gives you the length of the dipole. This gives you the length of the dipole. And if this length is very much lesser than the operating wavelength, that is whatever source you are applying to this. So it, that will give you the lambda value that is the operating wavelength. So if this length is very much lesser than the operating wavelength. So generally uh, uh, we consider 0.05 lambda so any value which is less than or equal to 0 0.05 lambda that is the length of the length of the antenna if it is less than or equal to 0 0.05 lambda right we consider it to be a short dipole so in in general we write it in this one that is length of uh, length of the dipole is very much lesser than the operating wavelength so if uh, we have a dipole which is of that form, then we classify it as a short dipole. If this condition is not satisfied, then we cannot call it as a short dipole. So here we need to consider a short dipole. So since this condition has to be looked forward, what happens is if you just observe L by lambda will be very much less than one based on this condition. So L by lambda, which will, will be very much lesser than one. So this we require when we want to simplify the equations further. So now we need to obtain the maximum effective aperture. Now in previous session, uh, that is in previous discussion, we saw that the effective maximum effective aperture is given by what? V square divided by 4P into RR. Uh, we had obtained that uh, derivation over here. So we obtained what is effective aperture. So from this, we obtain what is the maximum effective aperture in which case the loss has to be zero. These two resistances have to be equal and these two uh, reactive components have to be opposite to each other. So when these conditions are substituted, we get maximum effective aperture, which is V square divided by 4P into radiation resistance. 4P into radiation resistance. So now let us see uh, uh, how we can obtain the maximum effective aperture for this short dipole so whenever we are considering a short dipole uh, we can uh, consider the field distribution which is given over here so here uh, first we assume that this dipole is placed along y-axis in such a way that half of the length is on positive y-axis and half of the length is on negative y-axis and in this direction we have the x-axis representation so now when this dipole is placed along uh, in this, this way, what happens is uh, here we'll be having minus L by two and this side will be having plus L by two. So if we uh, just consider the overall length of the antenna, overall length of the antenna will be L. That is half is on the negative axis and half is on the positive axis. So overall I have, uh, we have the length of the dipole equal to L. So now uh, when we uh, measure the field, from this point to this point, when we measure the field from one end to the other end. So we had seen that when we apply the source, what happens is all the electrons tend to flow at one end. So when there will be uh, say a positive charge here and negative charge here, what happens is electric field will be moving from this end to this end. So this is how it will be moving around. So if I happen to uh, assume the electric field so it will be sin uh, if it will be sinusoidal in nature it will be sinusoidal in nature so therefore this is how the field distribution will be along the length of the dipole so when i represent this right 
it will be represented as cos omega t. It will be represented as cos omega t. And uh, we are assuming that the peak value of uh, this distribution, that is this cosine distribution is E naught. So when we consider that this is the field, instantaneous uh, field value what we have. So this is given by E is equal to E naught cos omega t. So if I substitute value of t, that is this is nothing but along this direction, if I just substitute the value of t uh, with the, all the possible values, right? What happens is I'll get all the possible values along the length of this dipole. So this is uh, the field value, which is E naught cos omega t. Uh, now uh, here we have to estimate the overall power uh, effective uh, maximum effective aperture we have to obtain these parameters so in this one first i should obtain what is this voltage value what is this voltage value so for this case what we do is we consider a elemental length we consider a elemental length of dy that is dy is the elemental length of this dipole and on this, this is the distribution what we are having. This is the distribution what we are having. And if we assume that uh, EY is the field which is being distributed. So this equation will be represented by EY. This uh, equation will be represented by EY. So if we are considering a small elemental length and this elemental length, we are considering that it is at a distance of Y from the center of this dipole. It is at a distance of y from the center of the dipole. So when we uh, consider these parameters, right, uh, what changes will be present? So here, uh, this E value, what we have, we can uh, replace it in uh, this form. That is, E is equal to cos omega t. Omega is what? 2 pi f into t. But what is uh, uh, f equal to? f is equal to v divided by lambda so when we substitute this we get simplified form of e is equal to that is this instantaneous value is equal to 2 pi v into t divided by lambda but uh, what is this uh, velocity into time equal to it gives you the distance it gives you the distance so in this case what happens is v into t gives you the distance from this origin it gives you this information. So if you just simplify that parameter, what you have E is equal to E naught cos 2 pi y by lambda. So how did you get y? If you just observe over here, what you have is omega t, omega is replaced with 2 pi f, but what is f? f is given by v divided by lambda where v is the velocity. v into t is velocity into time. It gives you the distance. That distance parameter is given by along the y-axis. That distance parameter is associated with y. So therefore, v into t is substituted with y over here. So therefore, you have instantaneous uh, field value given by E0 into cos 2 pi into y by lambda. Uh, so where uh, y is actually the distance from the origin what you are considering. So now, uh, so this is uh, you obtain the value of E uh, with respect to y. You obtain representation of E with respect to y. Now next uh, what we want is, uh, we, uh, we know that uh, electric field is given as potential difference that is V divided by D. It is given by this ratio where D is referring to the distance. So if I consider this one, right, then how do I obtain the overall representation? Therefore, the potential will be equal to E into this distance parameter. So if I consider this, uh, what happens is I want to know what is the elemental potential over here. So this will be given by dV. Uh, this will be given by dv equal to the electric field, the electric field which is given by e y, e y which is nothing but this, this equation, e y into the elemental length what we are considering, into the elemental length what we are considering over here.
okay so this equation pertains to that so elemental uh, potential over this will be given by product of the uh, electric field into the elemental length so that is what is specified over here this is obtained because v is equal to e into d so that is how we have obtained this so now this ey is nothing but this equation mm -hmm. ey is nothing but this equation so it is e naught into cos 2 pi y by lambda and uh, this is the elemental length now if i want the overall potential then what i have to do is i have to take integration on both the sides mm -hmm. so this one will lead to v is equal to the side will lead to v is equal to integration of this entire parameter with respect to dy so when i simplify this uh, right uh, right hand side when i simplify this integration on right hand side if you just observe this field is present only from minus lambda by 2 to plus lambda by uh, sorry a minus l by 2 to plus l by 2 so when i simplify this overall equation what i'll be obtaining is i'll be obtaining v which is equal to e divided by pi into lambda uh, sorry e not divided by pi into lambda into sine pi l by lambda that is after simplifying this integration part i'll be obtaining the potential difference value which is given by this equation 4 now what i do is i use the short dipole concept that is length is very much length of the short uh, length of the dipole is very much lesser than the operating wavelength so if that is the case l by lambda will be very much less than 1 so in this case what happens is if this is very much less than 1 so anything multiplied with that value will be also smaller value. So therefore what happens is this turns out to be sine theta which is nearly equal to theta. So this happens when theta is very much less than 1. So when I continue with this derivation, when I substitute this parameter in equation 4, this one turns out to be what? Pi into L by lambda this one will be nearly equal to pi into l by lambda so when i substitute this uh, i'll be cancelling pi by lambda here and pi by lambda here and what what will be left is i'll be obtaining v is equal to e naught into l so i obtained what is the potential value which is e naught into l now uh, so uh, here we see, see that we have obtained what is the value of v which is e naught into l for short dipole now I should know what is the power density value. So uh, sorry, uh, radiation uh, resistance value. So for short dipole, right, uh, radiation resistance is given by AT pi square into L square by lambda square. So this is uh, the value of radiation resistance for short dipole. So in coming forth sessions also, you have a derivation which is pertaining to obtaining the radiation resistance of short dipole. At present directly, we are using it over here. So we got to know what is V and we got to know what is radiation resistance. So now in uh, previous uh, this thing we had uh, seen that maximum effective aperture is given by V square by 4P into RR square. Now uh, this is nothing but the pointing vector what we had discussed. Uh, that is uh, the, uh, if you remember, P is nothing but the cross product of E and H that is cross product of E and H. So in that, uh, if you remember, we had simplified uh, this equation and uh, we had obtained. So since, uh, and this term will tend to one because angle between these two electric and magnetic field is 90 degrees. So we had obtained, so in simple, if I just write, it will be E into H, the both are magnitude values. And uh, we had seen that E by H is what? E by H is 120 pi for vacuum. That is, uh, it is uh, 377. That is intrinsic impedance. Intrinsic impedance is given by E by H. So I'll be using this parameter over here in order to obtain what is this P value. So that we have done over here. So this P value is uh, given as E into H. So now here uh, we have seen that it is E0 and H0, that is the magnitude values. We'll be considering it as E0 and H0 uh, since uh, we had seen that magnitude of E and magnitude of H. 
So this one will be referring to E naught and H naught. And when I simplify it in terms of only uh, uh, H naught, right? So we had uh, seen that E naught by H naught is 120 pi. So therefore, what is H naught? H naught is E naught divided by 120 pi. So if I substitute this over here, what I'll be getting, I'll be getting E naught square divided by 120 pi. So that value is substituted over here for P value. So E naught square divided by 120 pi is substituted over here. So when we uh, substitute that parameter, when we substitute V radiation resistance with this value and power density with E, e naught square divided by 120, uh, 120 pi, and when we simplify, we get a maximum effective aperture, which is given by 0.119 lambda square. So as we had seen that uh, previously, what uh, what should be the maximum uh, effective aperture uh, for uh, the isotropic antenna? It is 0 0.0796 lambda square. Now what you have obtained, you have obtained an effective aperture of 0.119 lambda square, which is a maximum effective aperture of a short dipole of a short dipole okay uh, so similarly in the next session we'll uh, discuss regarding effective aperture of lambda by two dipole and then uh, we'll look into the fresh transmission equation and lastly we'll look into the field zones antenna field zones uh, so this is all for today uh, uh, thank you